Welcome back to Canyon Tune, and today is actually going to be a follow-up episode to the tuning video I just did uh, regarding E36 tuning MS41.2. Um, I actually switched uh, mass airflow sensors. I didn't like the way this 350Z mass airflow sensor was working. Um, it had some weird uh, throttle tipping issues, really light throttle um, lean conditions and the overall drivability with it was just kind of crap. So I have a Euro 803 MAF, uh, it's the 3.5 inch housing, and I just switched to that, so I have to actually retune the entire fuel table. So I'm gonna take you along and do a live tuning session to show you the rhythm and process of how I go through and, uh, and work on the tune. If you guys are uh, new to the channel and just tuning in, um, this is my Supercharge E36 M3. It's F S52. Um, it's got a Rotrax C3881 blower, making about 7 PSI at redline. And we have that Porsche um, 803 MAF, and it's reducing down to three inch pipe. And I have a 2.2K resistor wired in. Uh, fairly standard stuff. I got, uh, I believe they're 440 cc Volvo injectors, green tops. Um, yeah, fairly standard setup. So uh, let me switch to the laptop here. Oh, one other thing I wanted to show you. Um, I don't know if you guys saw my initial tuning videos where I said you had to flash tunes from this uh, round connector in the engine bay. That's not entirely true. If you jump some of the pins in the 20-pin uh, connector, uh, two sets of them, uh, you can actually flash the tunes from inside the car if your car has an OBD port. If you're a Euro guy, I believe you can still wire in ODB port and still tune and log from inside the car, but that's what I'm gonna be working with today. So just wanna make sure you guys had a level set on my entire setup and before I actually get into the tuning aspect itself. All right, so I just wanna show you guys what I'm working with here. Um, we're inside the car and I have a USB connection hooked up to my wideband so I can log that straight into my laptop. And then on the other side, I have this going to my ODB port. Um, and again, if you jump those pins under the hood, you can read all the data from inside the car and not have to do anything silly, which is nice. Uh, so I'm gonna hop over to my laptop now and then we're gonna get to tuning. First thing I need to do here is actually flash an iteration of some fueling changes I made. So I'm gonna turn the key on and we are going to flash a partial file. And in this tune, I actually turn my uh, short-term fuel trim correction up to 50% additive fuel. It was extremely lean in some spots, so I'm just making sure um, everything's safe while it's doing its corrections. So we're going to flash this into the car. Now, this is a good starting point if you're starting at literally zero, because as soon as I change the mass airflow sensor... Um, it runs super terrible, so I have to create basically a brand new base map and kind of work my way from there. So you guys are going to go through the entire process end to end. <laughs> All right, so now we are going to open up Realm Raider Logger. We're calling this part throttle fueling. Okay, so once you turn the key on, you should get a list of parameters. Uh, these are the parameters that I usually use. So make sure you have short and long-term fuel trims. You have load and RPM are pretty much all you need for this. Um, and then if you have your wideband, make sure you go to plugins and then choose your wideband. <clears throat> and then make sure it shows up in your list there by going to external sensors and add it. So again, this is ROM Raider Logger. Wait a second for this to show up. Hopefully it does. Sometimes it doesn't. All right, so we're going to start the log, and then I'm going to start the car. All right, so there's my wideband reading. A little bit rich during warm-up, which is what we want. 
So the goal right now is I'm not going to drive anywhere. Um, I'm literally just going to sit here and rev a little bit and get some um, short-term uh, fuel trim corrections going here and, and take a look at what the ECU likes at uh, just free revving at idle. Because I don't want to start driving and have the car stall out on me and have these fuel trims uh, clear out. That's not ideal. So I want to get this fueling at lower RPMs as close as possible before I start really driving it and getting drivability down. Okay, so <clears throat> we are going to sit here for a minute and these short-term field trims should show up momentarily. All right, so then we're getting a little bit lean once it's warmed up. You, uh, you have to hit a certain um, coolant temperature, so ECT. So I'm only at 100 degrees right now before these fuel trims actually turn on. Hopefully it warms up soon. I do have some noise canceling turn on on my mic because it inherently has some noise to it. So I think it's going to mute out the actual uh, engine noise, un unfortunately. But uh, I'll make sure I take some GoPro video too while I'm driving around and doing some logging here. So we still don't have any short-term fuel trims yet. Uh, I'm still waiting for the car to warm up a bit here. I don't know exactly what temperature it uh, starts with the short-term fuel trim corrections, but uh, we'll see. In the meantime, um, short-term fuel trim, again, is your correction factor. Okay, so here we go. Um, so it's adding 4%, 5% fuel at idle, and we're maintaining about 14.7 to 1. So this is doing some correction for me. And then as we're logging um, and figuring out what the ECU wants, I'm going to actually apply that to my main fuel table. So it's kind of jumping around here, 5, 6%, uh, but it, it's actually not too bad. It's It was a little bit worse before. So let me do some revving and see see what happens here. I'm going to try to stay on the throttle a little bit here so it uh, doesn't die on me and turn these short-term fuel trims off again. Because these are really what I need to dial in the correction. Alright, so we're going to do some driving here and let's try to make it not stall. That is the goal. Because again, if we stall, it, uh, it loses those trims. So again, uh, this is kind of jumping all over the place, correcting like 5-10%. to 10%, So... We'll try to get the averages um, once it kind of settles out. But again, if I free rev, so like right now, it's adding like a bunch of fuel there, 20, 30% is taking out actually. So, so we're also just trying to hit a bunch of different load cells here as well and different RPM ranges because that's going to hit different parts of the map. All right, so we're going to go ahead and stop this log, turn off the car. So hit stop. Turn the car off. All right, close out of the logger. And then we're gonna come into uh, Megalog Viewer HD, open up that log we just created. Okay. And then we're gonna go into our histogram. And then make sure you have your load axis set up correctly. So I'm gonna just double check mine. Open up my current tune, got my load axis. So we got 50, 125, 175, 250, 325, 550, 625, 800, 1000, 1200, 1380. Yep, that looks right. All right, and then we're gonna make sure we have a filter on here that says anytime short-term fuel correction is zero percent we're going to ignore that so we're going to turn that filter on all right so here you got some fueling changes uh we got adding a bunch of fuel in some places and then the coloring right now is based on how many times i've hit that individual cell um so the more times the more green it is uh, is, you know, higher weight of correction. And it's actually going to average all the corrections. Um, so we're actually going to 
copy all this, paste it into our part throttle correction table like we showed in the other video. Paste that in there. <clears throat> all right. And we also want to paste in our current fuel table. So copy the entire table, paste it into our original fuel table from ROM Raider. There we go. The first axis sometimes gets off a little bit, so you have to move it over like that. But you can see at the end here, um, took out a whole bunch of fuel, added fuel down here, added a bunch of fuel in this area. So this should uh, get us closer to where we want to be. So this is our new fuel table that we're going to copy. This and come into your tune. Make sure you got the first cell highlighted and then paste. Okay, so these are all the cells that we hit. You can see that we changed color and you can even go into compare show changes and then uh, display percent difference and it'll show you the differences that you made. All right, so now we're gonna go ahead and save this as a new tune. Checking my last file name here. I'll call this version six. Save that. And we are gonna flash this version to the car. So come back over here. Go to partial right, make sure your key's on. So that is end to end the entire process for getting your fuel table dialed in. And then you eventually go to your wide open throttle fueling, which is your other table, um, your other uh, chart here. And then you would eventually um, get into your ignition tables and modify timing a little bit, but that's basically the process. I did just notice that my screen capture wasn't actually capturing the entire screen, so uh, I made my changes to my fueling, and we're going to do that again just so you have the full screen experience. Sorry about that, guys. So we're going to... Turn this on again, make sure our plugin's set for the wideband, start the log, and let it run for a bit and get our short-term fuel trims to turn on. We're actually doing quite a bit better coming back down the idle, like before it would stall out coming back down, so uh, I think we're getting a little bit closer here, luckily. Yeah, that's definitely better. Alright, so we got our short-term fuel trims turned on. And you can actually correct this uh, from, you know, your wideband readings as well. But uh, it's better to stay in the ecosystem of the ECU and what it's trying to correct and, and base your corrections based on that. Yeah, you'll get a lot closer uh, drivability when you uh, make sure you stay in line with these, these corrections that the ECU is trying to make. All right, um, I think let's try to go for a quick drive and uh, see what happens here. I'm gonna pull up the dashboard and turn on my load, short-term fuel trims. Let's do TPS, or actually RPM, TPS. I don't want too much information on the screen, but uh, let's see. Let's see if we can drive a little bit without getting this thing to stall out. So see how it's adding like <laughs> a bunch of fuel. Definitely need to make some corrections. And the more driving you can do, the better. The more data you have, the better that's going to be. Okay, so we went ahead and stopped our log. We're going to pull that up in Megalog Viewer. All right, and we're also going to turn off, eh, let's see, off throttle lean. Let me see what I have this set as. Uh, yeah, TPS less than 
So anytime I'm off throttle, we're just going to take that out of the equation here. So we have a whole bunch of correction. <laughs> um, we're going to take all this. Copy it. And then paste it into our heart throttle tuning. And then we're going to take our old fuel injection table. I'm actually going to close this out and open our new one. We'll paste it into here. Take our new fuel table. Paste it back into ROM Raider, our new tune. Again, make sure that first cell is highlighted, then go to paste. Okay, and save this as a new tune. So we're in seven. Close out the logger. Flash it. And again, that is the iterative process. It gets quite tedious, but the more driving cells you can hit, the better. Um, I really hope that was helpful for you guys, because I want to show you guys a live example of actually tuning a real car. A lot of these tuners will just make up BS and not actually know how to tune cars, so... I just wanted to show you guys that uh, I'm actually making real changes to my ECU and trying to make my car run better. <laughs> so after all that, um, <laughs> I don't think that my mass airflow sensor is working right. I mean, I keep correcting back and forth through a wide range of like negative and positive in the same areas. And then I'm also seeing in the scatter plots, like this should be a fairly straight linear line and not a wide area kind of all over the place. So I think my mass airflow sensor is bad. I really do. It's it's not, not responding like the way that I thought it would or the way that the uh, Nissan mass airflow sensor is working. So, I think the plan is to actually go back to a Nissan mass airflow sensor, but get a genuine Nissan one, and then kind of tune from there. Because I don't know, I cannot get this thing dialed in. It's like hitting a moving target almost. So, probably going to have to do another episode of this in continuation, but uh, yeah, you... If your mass airflow sensor isn't working correctly and reading, you're just kind of shooting for a moving target, essentially. So, thanks for watching. Um, I just wanted to kind of walk through the process of fuel tuning again, just to make sure that you guys understand and kind of get a real-life example. But, uh, yeah, thanks for watching. Tune in for the next one.